Hey guys, what is up? Mike here. Thanks for tuning in to another video. So one of the issues that a lot of designers face when they're in the job market, they have a portfolio, but maybe they're having trouble getting uh, people looking at their stuff, recruiters hitting them up, um, is that their design style is outdated. Now, this is a very, 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 very common issue that a lot of designers face. I have faced it for many years. Um, nobody is immune to this thing. Everybody faces this at some point, um, unless you're consistently adjusting your visual design styles. Now, this is a very simple fix because the things are out there um, and you already know how to design. Obviously, you have a portfolio, um, but it's very complex at the same time because it's very hard to change our old habits and our old patterns. And uh, I was just talking to somebody that I feel ran into this issue. Now this person had a portfolio, had several projects, you know, like four to five projects or whatnot, had good um, explanation of the problem that this person was solving. So had sort of good case studies and really showed good in-depth, you know, problem solving skills and things like that. So as a UX designer, this is what you want to show. You want to show your thought process and what problems you're solving and, and how you're, you're, you're um, solutioning this problem, how, you know, what solution you're coming up with and how you came about this. The only problem was that the, in each of the projects, the styles were dated. It felt very dated compared to current design trends and standards. Now, very easy to fix, but complex at the same time. Um, the first thing you got to do is a couple of things. One, we, you have to take an audit, you know, you have to take an audit of your, your work and you have to be brutally honest with yourself. All right. Now this issue that I'm talking about, I'm not immune to it. Nobody, I had, I know, I know this because I actually had to be honest with myself you know, for a long time. And once I started to adjust, then I was able to do the things to actually improve. And this is how I teach designers to improve their visual design skills and become better designers. Um, so the first thing you got to do, audit your work, just be honest with yourself and be honest with yourself and look at it and go, look at all the top design, design designs in the market. Look at the Ubers of the world. You can just Google top apps, ways, um, Spotify, um, YouTube, uh, you know, Google Maps, um, the, the stuff are endless out there, right? Whatever top apps are in the market today that millions upon millions upon millions upon millions upon millions of people use, um, as well as just some of the up and coming products, you can go to producthunt.com and look at some of the, the cool products that are coming out. You have to look at those apps, those, those apps and those designs and compare them to yours and you have to be honest with yourself and sometimes you pro you have to look at it and go like what is it that that makes my designs different than theirs i think i think my designs look okay uh, you know i it looks fine but it just doesn't look like these these new apps and it all comes down to about five about five different things are roughly around five different things. One, it comes down to your spacing. It comes down to the color choices, white space and the bright colors that you see on some of the newer apps. It comes down to the typography uh, that you're using. Um, it comes down that to the icon choices that you're using. And it comes down to, you know, sometimes it comes down to the, the overall layout. And I would say that's, it, you can add that to spacing and the overall layout, right? You combine those and imagery in apps kind of like minimal in terms of like the images you use, but you can throw images in there as well. It all comes down to those things. Those are just some of the five basic, basic things that makes up a UI design. Now, what you have to do in order to change this, once you're, once you're honest with yourself and you identify, man, my site, my, my projects don't look like these, these newer ones. How do you do this? You got to go back to the basics. You got to go back to the basics. Two parts. Step one, you have to practice. You have to steal 
these top designs. And you, what you do is you go home every single night, you go to Dribbble, you go to Pinterest, you take a screenshot, take one of these apps that you see, these nice looking apps, and you spend an hour or two and you start mimicking that design for practice um, to get familiar with um, some of the changes that you are gonna have to incorporate in your design. So when you, when you do this, you take a design, you pixel for pixel and you try to mimic that exact design, it's going to put you in an uncomfortable place because it's gonna force you to use different type of spacing that you're probably used to. It's gonna force you to look for and search for icons that you probably wouldn't use in your designs in terms of your go-to moves. It's going to force you to choose colors that you have no, you would never have used like a bright pink, right? You would never use that in a design, but guess what? That's probably some of the trends that are out there, some of these nice startups, right? Um, uh, it's gonna force you to choose and search for a font and use a certain, uh, you know, font weight for this particular header and this and that, it was gonna force you to kind of uh, lay things out differently than what you're accustomed to. And so it's gonna put you in that, that uncomfortable place, but that's what you need to do in order to start practicing. And I teach this all the time. It's about copy, like just mimicking work, copying work, just so you can become familiar with how these, these designs are spaced out. What's the size of this particular um, font? This typeface. What type? What font? What typeface are they using? Are they, are they using Roboto? Are they using a rounded corner sans serif? Are they using? You know what I mean? So, are they uh, contrasting two types of uh, two types of fonts for this particular project? What icons are they using? Are they using a bold icon, or is it using more of a thin lined icons? You know, um, pattern. Those are the type of things that you're gonna have, you're gonna do while you're practicing your copying. And then, when you start implementing this into a project, I always, I taught this last decade. You have to use these sites as a reference point. So you're almost like stealing and you're copying these designs as you're building out your projects. That right there, a lot of people don't want to talk about that. A lot of people are scared of the term steal. But that's how those of us who were learned from the streets, those of us who didn't go, go to a traditional like art design school like myself, you have to learn that way. And trust me, everyone steals. There is no coincidence that 95% of the designs you see on Dribbble and Pinterest all look the same. It can look like it's from the same designer. It's, you know, they didn't just think, sit there in a park one day and go, you know what, I'm going to do a white space, rounded corners with a soft drop shadow, um, you know, and I'm going to use these, these, these illustrations, you know, these cartoony objects and whatnot and these bright colors. No, they see the trends and they mimic these trends that they see. They see the icons that, that this top designer is using, so they kind of mimic that. They see this particular, this designer who is like, who's leading in dribble in terms of followers and his design style. So they kind of mimic that a little bit. Everyone does this. Everyone does this. And the problem is a lot of designers are very honest and they don't do this. And they, they lead, they go down a path of designing by their own defaults and their own sort of um, go to moves, if you will. And they go off on a straight. So you think of it like a like a like a, a forked road, right? All these designers that you see on Dribble, they're all copying each other. They're going this way. And you're over here. You're like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be innovative. I'm gonna do my own thing. And so you're going off to the side. But the masses is moving in this direction. And what happens is, you get left behind. And that's what we have to kind of like become aware of looking at our visual design styles and then you know making sure that's up to par because when you're when you're playing the game how you look and how you present your work and all that stuff is gets you in the door right presentation is everything you know um, and then once you if, if that's set and you you're now um, you know, up to date with some of the modern looking field. Now it all comes down to your knowledge and what you say on the phone, what you say in an interview and how you speak about, you know, your, 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 
creative process and your critical thinking process and things like that, right? But you got to play the game. You got to get your portfolio on deck and, you know, on point up to modern standards in order to avoid maybe that problem. Maybe they're, you're getting overlooked because your style is outdated. But it happens to us all. You have to be honest with yourself. And that's what I teach. That's how I teach, you know, visual improvement of visual UI design as well as, you know, talking about all the different methods and, and principles in terms of becoming a strong UX designer. So I teach that at ML UX Academy. If you're interested in learning how I teach and what I teach, you can go to my site and get started today for free. My membership, you can try for 14 days and learn some of these techniques um, that I'm talking about right now. Visit my site, links at the bottom. Hopefully this video was helpful. It got you to think a little bit and uh, you can start applying these things tonight. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.